praise the Lord. Salamat po, Brother Dan. My, my favorite. <laughs> Amen, praise the Lord. No, si Leia po yung favorite ko. <laughs> Amen, praise God. So, once again po, brothers and sisters, good morning sa bawat isa. So, kamusta po ang bawat isa sa mga oras na ito? How was your week? Amen po. So, glory to God. We also acknowledge the presence of our guests and visitors. Okay, ang ating pong dalawang uh, teacher from the New Filipino Private School. So, we are honored po that uh, you are with us today. So, praise the Lord. And we are also, I am also happy not to really say that one of our visitors is from my hometown. <laughs> okay, po. so Sister Iris also po is also from Occidental Mindoro. Okay, as you know, we are uh, called Mangyan, the Mangyan tribe. And so if you have not seen Mangyan before, now you are seeing us here because some of them were in the UAE. So I, I pray and I... Sister Teretpo is also a Mangyan. Don't forget. <laughs> okay, nag-migrate lang po yan. Kuya Alan po is also a Mangyan. So dumarami na ang Mangyan dito. <laughs> so I was just so happy because if I will be out and I'm asking those uh, people even in the basketball court when you're asking, I've never seen anyone from our place, from Occidental Mindoro. So it sounds like rare, no? And it happened na uh, Ngayon po dumarami na kami. Amen. So praise the Lord. So nakakatawa lang po on how the Lord is bringing yung mga tao na. We are also connected po because uh, of her teacher was our classmate in high school. It was the friend of my wife, Lorna. So marami po kaming mga, you know, uh, kakilala that we can relate to. Amen. So praise the Lord. And uh, once again po, Good morning sa, sa bawat isa. Amen. So everything is ready? Amen. Praise the Lord. So God is good. And all the time? Amen. So praise God. So by way of introduction, you know po, one thing that I really desire on my retirement is to have a farm. Okay? Na magkaroon ng coconut trees, yung dwarf po, no? Magkaroon ng, uh, ng goat farm, di ba? Yung mga chicken tree rains farming. No, those are those dreams that when you get old, no, if it is God's willing that God would allow it, I would also like to have a ship. Okay po, yung mga tupa. No, because I wanted to experience how is it to shepherd a uh, ship. So, ang pag-uusapan po natin today, our subject today, we'll be talking about shepherding, okay, o yung pagpapastol. So, in generally speaking, what we are going to see today is from the perspective of God. So, ito po yung ating pag-aaralan for today. And I wanted to share this, and I want to instill this into your mind, okay, a picture of a shepherd, Okay, so this, I want you to begin with and keep this into your mind throughout the message for today. A picture of a sheep and the shepherd. So for us po to really see and understand ano po yung ating mga pag-uusapan for today. So now I'm going to assume that all of us have seen a real live Ship. Okay, for I, I, I would assume that all of us here in the UAE have seen this because if I was in the Philippines, I never seen this before. But now I have seen this. Okay, there are so many there, some mga roadside all around the Emirates. Okay, so may kita nyo po yon. So hindi po yon yung mayroong bukol sa likod, kamilyon, no? <laughs> so Sheep, yung tupa, so mostly kasi nakakain tayo ng moton, di ba, ng lambat. The sheep 
Okay, so this is the picture that we wanted you to carry on as we go along to the message this morning. And there is going to have a video. I hope yung audio nito is clear. Okay. And I want to show you this. I, I want you to really see the whole picture because it is a kind of a preparation to our message in building up, in framing up yung ating pag-uusapan for today. So I really want you to, to, to notice something on this. Okay? And to observe and get the very message of this video. Okay? One more time. po nakita niyo yung the whole picture of this video. No, na notice hindi niyo lang po na notice si Kabayan, no? Nandoon si Kabayan. <laughs> Wag lang po 'yun, ano? But the whole picture from the boys, no? And the way the sheep respond to the shepherd. Okay? So it's a communication. And after that, when the shepherd comes and ang nakita po natin, they are following the shepherd. Okay? So the shepherd was in the front. So this is the whole picture of the message that we are going to hear this morning. So I may request everyone to please arise with me as we read the Word of God in the book of John chapter 10. John chapter 10, we will be reading the whole, it's a long verses, okay? So from verses 1 down to verse 18. John chapter 10, verse 1 to 18, it says here, I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and lead them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me 
were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not recognize them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and it scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down for my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father. Blessed be the reading of God's beautiful word. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we honor you and praise you, God. And how beautiful it is to hear your word that once again is spoken to each and every one of us. Father, it's our prayer that you will speak to each and every one of us individually, as a couple, as a family, and as a community. May you able, Lord God, to help us to continue to hear your voice through this message that we are going to hear today. Father, not let your will be done, nothing less and nothing more. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. So just want to brief you of the flow of the message. First, we are going to talk about the background of shepherding in the old times, how they are doing it. Then also we are going to talk about the settings when the Lord Jesus Christ says that I am the great shepherd. Okay, we want to see the situations, what is going on in the surroundings. And the third one is when the Lord Jesus Christ revealed who he is. And the fourth one, siyempre, is yung, awing, yung ating takeaway. Okay, a reflection to the message. So these only four points that we are going to have this morning. Amen. So praise the Lord. So kids, do you know Sean the sheep? <laughs> yes? And some of, uh, some of uh, the guys answering is, uh, is also a kids. <laughs> okay? Who have watched this before. But I know that many of the parents here also have watched this. Amen po ba? If you didn't watch this, then malungkot ang inyong kabataan. <laughs> okay, so the person, the, the person there is the farmer. Okay, and there is one in the middle. Okay, si Sean. And yung dog. Do you know who is that dog? What's his name? Okay, I even also don't know before, but I researched it. So his name is Bitzer. Okay, he is the one controlling the sheep, okay, the flock. And I will show you again a video of this for us to really see the whole thing before we go on. Didn't think I could live without you. Now I'm living, I don't think about you. Should have known better. Ain't clever to keep on lying forever together. Didn't know if I would run back or walk or talk or even if that. If I leave, you couldn't breathe or see without me, baby, maybe that. Is why you had to go away that night to see that other guy and fill my head with lies. We 
falling And you, my darling, you can see so I just want you to see how the sheep dog controls the flock. Okay? That is the modern way of shepherding. Okay? Now can you imagine, okay, this huge number of sheep to be done in the way they are doing it before. So today, until today, okay, so in the west part, okay, even in our in, in some of the places in, uh, in Australia, this is the way they handle, they shepherd the flock. They use a dog, a sheep dog, to really para itaboy or i-gather yung mga sheep. So there is a relation between the sheep dog and the shepherd. But we are not going to talk about that. We are going to focus on the shepherd and the sheep. That is the modern way of shepherding. Okay? But in the old times, in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he said this word, this is the way they shepherd the flock. So in every community, they will have this sheep fold. Or in the Bible translation you have, it is a sheep pen. So it's a pushang enclosed na place. Nakulungan, which is made of stones and somewhere yung mga matatalim na mga wood that surrounds it. Okay, that is for the protection of the sheep para sa mga thief. Okay, and for the robbers. So maraming community in Israel are having those sheep fold. And on those sheep fold, if you will notice, there is only one door. Okay? And on that door, there is always a doorkeeper or a gatekeeper who is going to be right behind that door. Okay? It is like to guard this door. So the idea of shepherding, maybe it's not familiar to us, but in that time, that is very common. They understand that very well because that is like a necessity for them of a sheep of a sheep okay and many of them were really a shepherd so inside the sheep fold are many different flocks or different group of sheep okay and if you're going to understand how many are there in a flock now there is a parable of the lost sheep if you remember and how many sheep are there there are 100 sheep Diba? At nangyari po doon, there are one sheep that is being lost. Nawawala po yung isa. And so the shepherd kept the 99, leave the 99, and go and find for the one that is missing. Because po, there is really no way for that lost sheep to come back to the fold, to the flock. There is really no way for him. He don't have that kind of instinct. That is why the farmer, the shepherd, has to really leave everything and really go and find that. And later on, we are going to see the, the parallel of this in relation to all of us. So we can say that in one flock, there is a hundred sheep. Okay? And so in a sheep pen, there are more than one or two or three flock. Okay? So ito po yung... yung, yung Yung mm, situations, you know, why they have so many flock inside the sheep pen. Because in a community, if you are a shepherd, okay, kung gusto mong uh, sa gabi, during the night time, you want to, to keep your sheep, okay, you are, you're not going to keep it in an open area. You have to keep it in a sheep pen or in a sheep fold. And doon po in the community, there will more than one sheep fold. So lahat ng shepherd, they are going to put in there. And one of the shepherd will be like a gatekeeper that will be assigned to really watch over the, who, the overnight. Okay? And so ito po yung resting area for the, shep, for the sheep. Okay? Yung, yung, yung kanilang sheep fold. And so when the morning comes, the shepherd now will go inside the sheep fold. And the job of the gatekeeper 
is to really know if this is really a shepherd. If he is the shepherd, then he will allow this shepherd to go inside the sheepfold. And once this shepherd was inside now of the sheepfold, how he is going to know where is his sheep? Okay, ang sheep po is like magkakamukha sila, no, di ba? How he is going to know it? Now, there is this beautiful now picture that we are going to see. He is going now to call his own sheep. And he calls them, sabi sa ating text, he calls them by their name. Now, can you imagine, brothers and sisters, there are five flocks inside of it, and once the shepherd comes in, there's only one shepherd that comes inside, and once he takes out his flock, then the other one will come in and call his. So, there is really no way that there's going to be a mix-up. Because the sheep knows the voice of his shepherd. And the shepherd really knows his own sheep. So there is no way that he will have an extra later on. Okay, so that is the whole picture. And I don't know if this is like 100, if he is calling by name. Maybe he calls in, in one name. Yeah, like for example, the video that we have watched. Okay, that there is one name. Like for example, if we are all sheep here and I'm going to call you, and maybe I will name you all Win Sharjah, and all of you is going to respond. Diba? So that's the beautiful feature whenever the shepherd comes in of the sheepfold. And you know, brothers, I can imagine if I'm going to have those sheep, no, what would be their name? No? I want to put names on it. Maybe siguro yung mabait na member ng Win Sharjah. <laughs> diba? So maybe I will call. No, I will just send you a picture that, oh, you know, this ship is your name. <laughs> so this is really a very nice picture. And we can also see in that video that the ship doesn't respond to the stranger. Diba? They never recognize. No? They never responded to them. Okay, just like maybe if you have pets back home in the Philippines. Okay, si Blackie, si Whitey, si Brownie. No? I don't know if the black color of your dog, you can call him white if he will respond or not. Okay? So, but we can see the whole picture of it that how much the shepherd spent his time for the sheep to really recognize his voice. Such a beautiful relationship that is going on. And there are so many things that we can really learn from this relationship. Right? So this is the background of how they shepherd the flock in the old times by having this sheep fold. Now the second point that I want to discuss is the settings. What is the settings when the Lord Jesus Christ said this discourse, this word that I am the good Shepherd. Ano kaya ang situations in chapter 10 verse 11? Is they have this kind of surroundings na nandoon sila sa parang isang bonfire by the seashore na maraming food and a person, the teacher who is there is standing in, in all these people who are sitting together? Do you think that that is a kind of a picture? Brother and sister, it's not. But instead, Jesus Christ was in the Temple Mount. Okay po? So ito po yung ang Temple Mount po is the temple which is the center of Judaism. Now, if we can call it in our term, that is a home court of the Sanhedrin. So dayo po, Ang ating Panginoong Isus to that very place. So that is the home court of the policy of the Sanhedrin, those religious leaders in that time. And it's when the, the Lord Jesus Christ was there speaking, and in those people who are standing against Him were the policies that surrounding Him. Okay? They were all there and this policy was so eager doing their best 
to really discredit the Lord Jesus Christ and to move all these people, all the Israelites, all the Jews, away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, brothers and sisters, in our text in chapter 10, they were in the middle of this heated conversation, heated arguments. If you are going to read from chapter 8, from verse 12, it begins there. Because it is the time when the Lord Jesus Christ, in chapter 8, verse 12, that He says that I am the light of of the word it was there it starts the confrontation that heated up okay between the lord jesus christ and the policy and whenever the policy hear the lord jesus christ is speaking it angered them and if we are going to follow the narrative from chapter 8 down to chapter 9, down to chapter 10, we are going to feel the intense pressure that is going on in the question and answer portion. Every time the policy challenged the Lord Jesus Christ of this question, the Lord Jesus Christ answered them back. That every time the Lord Jesus Christ answered them, they were shocked. In the way Jesus handled every situation. And sometimes the Lord Jesus Christ even insulted them with the bold declaration of our Lord and Savior. That's why in John 8, 51, I tell you the truth, verily, verily, I say unto you, if anyone keeps my word, sabi niya doon, he will never see death. Grabe, no? The policy was asking him a question, who are you? Who, who's, in whose authority that you were speaking in our midst? And the Lord Jesus Christ says, I tell you the truth, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. And the policy jumps on this when he said, what you were saying? You mean that your word is equal to the word of God? Diba? And that is the way the Lord Jesus Christ is saying that the word that I am speaking to you are the same word that God is telling. Diba? We remember last Sunday, Pastor Nick preached to us, the Lord Jesus Christ revealed us the word of God. God. Amen po? So every time the Lord Jesus Christ answered them, they always challenge Him. Kaya po pagbabasahin natin dito, no? Sabi dito sa 52, at this, the Jews exclaimed, the Jews were shouting, were crying, when the Lord Jesus Christ says that, I tell you the truth, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. At this, the Jews exclaimed, Now we know that you are a demon possessed. Sabi na sa ating Panginoong Jesus, Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that if anyone keeps your word, he will never taste death. Are you greater to our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. So who do you think you are? And Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know Him, I know Him. Imagine you can say this to the Pharisees. Those people who is theologically well-educated when it comes to to the law, to the word of God. Those people have been dedicated their life and Jesus is saying, you don't know him. But I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Niyo, Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. 
Jesus is saying, He saw me and was glad. Then one of the Jews shouted, You are not 50 years old yet. And you have seen Abraham? And the Lord Jesus Christ replied here, I tell you the truth. In the King James, it says, Sir, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, Imagine the faces of these people who are listening to him. Before Abraham was, Sabi niya doon, I am. The Lord Jesus Christ are saying and taking the covenant name of God, Yahweh. I am. And he is taking it into him. Applying it to himself. And so what happened in the following verse? At this they pick up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself sleeping away from the temple grounds. And you can feel the intense pressure that is going on when the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking. So that is the beginning of those confrontations. And so it follows in the chapter 9 discourse when the Lord Jesus Christ, actually brothers and sisters, this also happened on the same day. So when the Lord Jesus Christ were on the temple, he saw this man who is born blind. Diba? And pinagaling niya ito. And nakita natin yung narrative flow kung susundan po natin and we can really see that the Pharisees were so angry at this time. Diba? In, in John 10, 30, mas lalo pa itong nagalit sila, no? when the Lord Jesus Christ says that I and the Father are one. <laughs> Grabe. In the following verse, again, they pick up stones to stone the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the Pharisee in chapter 11, when the Pharisee saw that they are really losing the grip over the people, they are really losing the power over the people because many now are following the Lord Jesus Christ. Diba? So what comes to them, the worst part, is they plan now to kill the Lord Jesus Christ. John eleven fifty three. So from that day on, when the Pharisees, when the whole Sanhedrin council gathered together in a place, what they have planned is to kill the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the settings, that is the image that draws in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are in the middle. The Lord Jesus Christ were in the middle of the first one that he, they are planning to stone him and the next one where they are planning to stone him again and of course when they are planning to kill him. The Lord Jesus Christ in chapter 10 were sandwiched. He is in the middle of this confrontation. So it's not really a really cool message, a really cool situation. Okay? There were people watching the Lord Jesus Christ trying to kill him. And now, when the Lord Jesus Christ rebuilt himself, sabi niya dito in verse 11 of chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So here is the Son of God. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuilt himself as what? The good shepherd. The great shepherd. Here Jesus is making a great and absolute shocking revelation of himself. I am the good shepherd. He is claiming to be God. And the people once again surrounds him knows this very well. When the Lord Jesus Christ says that he is a shepherd, they know what the shepherd means. Diba you remember Psalm chapter 23? The Lord is my shepherd. They only have one book, the Old Testament. And the people of Israel knows well what it means of a shepherd. Diba? 
again, it says here, Isaiah 40, He shall feed His flock like a shepherd. It refers to God Himself. That He shall gather the lambs with His arm and carry them in His bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Ezekiel 34 verse 11. For this is what the sovereign, sovereign Lord says, I myself, God is saying here that I myself will shepherd this flock. I will search for those sheep and will look after them. Ezekiel chapter 4, 15. I myself will tend my sheep. I myself is the shepherd who is going to take care of the sheep. This is what the Lord God mean here. In Psalm, there are so many verses in the Old Testament. For He is our God and we are the people of His pasture. Ibig sabihin po, we are the sheep and God is the shepherd. So we can see, brothers and sisters, if we are sitting, if we are on the feet of every listeners of the Lord Jesus Christ on that time, they really understood about shepherding. And they believe, okay, because the expression in the Old Testament about this is full. Napakarami pong expression about the sheep and the shepherd. The shepherd who care and take care and provide for the flock. So for the Jews, they know that there is only one true shepherd and that is only God. They know it well because it is their great shepherd who what? Who provide food for them in the wilderness. It is the shepherd, the, true, the, the one and true God who care for them, who rescue them again and again. So they know all of the Jews, this time they know that it is the one true God is the true shepherd. So the point is that when the Lord Jesus Christ says that I am the good shepherd, he is claiming, he is making a claim that only belongs to God. Diva, When he rebuilt himself, and he says this word, he claims things that only belongs to God. Jesus Christ is ascribing the attributes of God to himself. And he declared that he has the authority that only belongs to God alone. So he is saying that he is God, although it is indirective. We cannot see in the gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ really says that I am God. But in all of the principles, what he meant in every word that he says that he is God. Amen po ba? So again and again, we can see that the Lord Jesus Christ is telling them and showing them that I am God incarnate. I am God in person. Ako ang Diyos na nagkatawang tao. And for that reason, they accuse him. The Pharisee accused him of blasphemy. They were saying, you were insulting our God. Diva. And so in our next verse, sabi dyan, the hired hand is not the shepherd. Or in your translation, the hirelings is not a shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and run away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. So what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying here about the hired hand, or those, the hired hand po is the worker, okay, who is going to look after and they are being paid, okay, with some amount of money. And the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, the hirelings, the hired hand, were selfish. They are hypocrites. They were greedy. And they are spiritually useless. So in the context, the Lord Jesus Christ 
calls the Sanhedrin, he calls the Pharisee, those religious leaders, as the hired hand. The Lord Jesus Christ is directing them that you are these hirelings. So it is very clear that the Lord Jesus Christ condemned them of this. Now, if you're going to see the whole chapter 10, we are going to notice in the first one down okay, to verse 5, the Lord Jesus Christ is talking about the thief and the lovers. Okay, we know the thief is like Judas, okay? He is a thief. Then si Barabbas po is a robber. So it's a description that deals with the same purpose, though they are different. Ang thief is still something that is not their own in a cunning way that the person, the owner, will not know. But the robbers will use by force to get what he wants. And the Lord Jesus Christ is saying here that you are the thief and the robbers telling to these people. Because if you are going to read the whole narrative, as I have mentioned before, it is like a one course of discussions from chapter 8 down to chapter 11. In chapter 10, verse 11, the hired hand and the wolves were also a symbol of the Sanhedrin. The wolves that attack the flock of God were also the Sanhedrin. So the thief and the robbers and the hirelings or the hired hand do what they do for money. And the wolves are the same. The wolves are motivated to hunt, to, to, to really fulfill something in his fleshly desire. So nothing that really motivates him in a way that God really motivates his shepherd, his servant. And my question po dito is that, why is it that the Jew doesn't recognize the Lord Jesus Christ as the Messiah? Why is it that they don't know that Jesus, or they don't accept that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Messiah? In John 10:26, the Lord answered this question. He says here, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. The, the, the religious leaders, you don't believe me. It is only simple answer because you are not my sheep. And there are so many arguments on this statement in the Christendom, in our Christianity. So many denominations built on this. But I will leave it to you. And here Jesus is saying that I am the good shepherd. So I am the one who stand against the wolf. I am the one who fight against the wolf. I am the good shepherd. Compared to the hired hand, I am the good shepherd. Amen? I am the one who protect and care and depend the sheep. Now in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. So God is saying here, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying that the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is all-knowing. He is omniscient. Diva. So it doesn't say here that the shepherd knows something about you. It says here that he knows you. Your whole being as a sheep, the shepherd knows you. So it talks about an intimate relationship of us as a sheep to our shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, being our good shepherd. It talks about a very close relationship. So what we are saying here that God knows me and he knows all of us individually and personally. In fact, brothers and sisters, God knows each and every one of us by name. How wonderful is that? 
Amen po. And this is the beautiful truth, and I want you to keep this on your mind. That brothers and sisters, God knows us far better than we know ourselves. God knows each and every one of us far better than we know what is better to us. God knows how many strands of hair are there on your head. Kahit po kalbo ako, alam ko na alam ni Lord how many hair that I have. God knows what you are going through right now. God knows what is even in your heart and in your mind right now. God knows it well. And you know, brothers and sisters, even God knows what is better for you. What is better for your situation today? What is better for your situation tomorrow? God knows all of them. All of this because He loves us as a sheep. And brothers and sisters, the beautiful thing is that did God really put an effort to know me? No. It is in His nature because He is all-knowing. And it's also good to know, brothers and sisters, that His love towards me is not even going to change a little inch. It's never going to change. The love of God for His sheep doesn't change because God doesn't change. In His nature, He doesn't change. So God loves us. Amen po? So praise the Lord. That the way that God loves me before the foundation of the word, bago pa ako pa ipinanganak, ang pagmamahal ng Diyos sa akin is ganun na hanggang sa mga oras na ito. And that love, brothers and sisters, cannot be measured. Amen po? In the following verse, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it off again. So what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying here that as a good shepherd, I am in full control. God is speaking of his sovereignty. Amen? He has the authority over life and also he has an authority over death. And no one in all of the created beings have that kind of authority. Because that authority is only belongs to God. Amen po? It's only to Him. And you may also notice it says here that I give my life. I lay down my life. His life was not taken. It was given. I lay down my life for the sheep. It also speaks of brothers and sisters of his death. And at the same time, it speaks of his resurrection when he said that I lay down my life only to take it up again. It speaks of his atonement that the Lord Jesus Christ died for us, that his blood has been shed for the forgiveness of our sin. He purchased us with his precious blood. So that is the analogy of our good shepherd. When he also speaks of his resurrection, because he says that I lay down my life only to take it up again. Who is having that kind of authority? It only belongs to our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We're saying that I have that authority. Now, there might be a shepherd that can die for the sheep. But when that shepherd die, the sheep has now in danger. Diba? Any, any, sheep, any shepherd can die for the sheep. But the great shepherd were different because when he died, he keep the sheep in safe place. And sabi do, nothing could ever pluck them out from my father's hand. What a beautiful truth. Just go and read the whole chapter. Okay, let's move forward. What is our takeaway? 
Okay? Our reflection to these brothers and sisters. Now, I want you to really understand that we are the sheep. We are the follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you're not to be sad when you are not called to be the lion. The lioness, the tiger, the bulldog, the American bully. Diba? You were not called to be a cat. Ano pa ba? You were not called to be an eagle. We are called to be a sheep. And I think God has very good purpose why he used this analogy that we are sheep. So whenever the Bible called that God is the shepherd, we as a follower portrays as a sheep. So in our context, what is it to be a sheep? So a picture of a sheep, just as I have showed you before, and just go and imagine it, a picture of a sheep itself is beautiful and it's cute. Diba? It's clean. It's pure white. But the reality, they are not. The sheep always need a shepherd to guide them and lead them into the pasture. The sheep were entirely and completely dependent on the shepherd. So it means that the sheep cannot survive without the shepherd. So hindi po yun magsusurvive just like a cat. Just leave it there and pursue buhay yan. Makakakain yan. But the sheep, they are fully dependent to the shepherd. They were helpless. They cannot go on their own to the pasture. That is why if you see the, the video, they are just going to follow the shepherd. They will just stay in their place. If, if the shepherd doesn't call them, they will not come. They will not go to a pasture. Okay? They don't have that kind of capacity. They cannot find a pasture on their own. So, ganun po yung sheep. Sheep is also, sheep always wander away from safety. Kaya po may fence. And every time po ang ginagawa na, they will move around to that fence. And every time na may opening, they are insisting to really go out. That is the nature of the sheep. Kaya po on the farmers today, when I saw the video, watch those who make a documentary, they always have to make it sure that the fences were maintained from time to time. Because the sheep instinct, they always move away from safety. And this is why, brothers and sisters, it's important that they were in the fences. Sheep are also defenseless. They don't have those fangs, those sharp teeth. They don't have claws to really find against the predator. If you will send him into the wild, they will die of what? They will die of panic. When they hear like a loud sound, a flowing water, they will run around, hit their head, get injured and die. That is the sheep. They are really defenseless. They don't have any instinct to fight and to protect themselves. They don't have any way to hide, to camouflage themselves. They don't have those kind of instinct. They were also dirty. They don't have the instinct to clean themselves. Just like yung may mga pusa dito, di ba, dinidilaan na sarili nila, they can clean themselves. But the sheep doesn't have those kind of instinct. They were dirty and the, if they will not be cleaned by the shepherd, for sure they will die in a short period of time. They were fully dependent to the shepherd. And also they easily get lost. Yung pusa, iwan mo siya 500 meters away from your home. For sure, bago ka makauwi, nandoon na yan sa bahay mo. But the sheep, you send him 50 meters away from the pasture, he will get lost, he will get lost of the truck. And he will not be able on his own to come back to the flock. He doesn't have that kind of instinct. And so brothers and sisters, we can relate on this. All of this truth about the sheep that means in the Bible talks about each and every one of us. Each and every one of us has gone astray and take our own way. Diba? When the sheep was astray, kapag naligaw po ang sheep, he will be out of track, 
there is no way for him to come back unless the shepherd bring him back to the flock. So that is the reality and we have to face it. That we are like a sheep who is dirty, who is sinful. We are being stained by sin in our nature, in our own will. We are all sinners. We are rebellious people. We are spiritually helpless and we are fully dependent on our shepherd. So we need the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Master, our Provider, our Protector to be with us. We are fully dependent on Him because He is the one who is going to lead us that beautiful picture of Psalm 23 that I, if I will be in the Lord, I shall know in want. Wala na kong kailangan pa. And if we are truly His sheep, we hear His voice and will follow Him. Can we have the praise and worship team here in the front? And we are, go, we are now going to close. So brothers and sisters, the, the question here is really, are you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ as your shepherd? Diba? Because if not, then you are a sheep that doesn't have a shepherd. You are a sheep that doesn't have any guide in your life. No one is directing you. That is how it is. So it is very important that we always acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ were our shepherd. Let us all stand up and let us pray. And after that, we'll have our benediction. Heavenly Father, we honor you and praise you, God, once again for this wonderful day that you have given us. Thank you for enabling us to see the very message that you want us to instill into our hearts, Lord God. And Father, it is always our prayer that whenever you speak through your word, enable us, O Lord God, that we may hear it. Enable us, O Lord God, that we may obey it and that we may give glory unto your name. Father, we pray for each and every one of us here in our midst, for those brothers and sisters who are really longing to hear your voice that you will speak forth to them. Father, enable them, send thy Holy Spirit and bring them, O Lord God, before you. Thank you, O God, once again for this victorious day that you have given us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord.